Hello traders, it's Samurai Trader here. Welcome to this training session how to day trade using the overlay chart. So basically, the overlay chart is very simply where we take a number of the indicators from our anchor chart one and overlay them in or on your entry chart in a lower window. Now, it's no better or no worse than say using your standard anchor chart one uh, chart or standard entry chart however it does allow you to see most of the information that you require on the one chart so what I'm going to do is just show you some live trading I took today and actually it was a little more accidental that I started to trade live so I've recorded a little which I'll show you as well and we'll look at some other potential setups we'll go back and perhaps look at uh, the setups over a few hours as well so uh, this PowerPoint and the recording will be in the members area so first of all understanding the risks you know the drill you can always pause the recording to read the disclaimer so traders you need to be checking regularly and I know I bring this up in virtually every video why because they're critical we need to know where our pivot levels are where our prior days open high low and close levels are where our 89 and 200 EMAs in fact they nearly gave me or they were giving me grief when I was trading on the overlay chart today in fact that they weren't ideal setups but I'll explain that when I get to the charts and a couple of things perhaps that I'd recommend that you don't do and you actually wait for also we want to know where intraday swing highs and lows are I've got a great example of a trade or potential trades there as well and of course where our current days high and lower so the indicators that we actually use now uh, first of all I do have a PowerPoint of a, of a session I recorded some time ago on how to overlay another time frame in NT8 now I'm not sure about other trading platforms so if you just simply google it or go to a members forum uh, for that particular trading platform you'll generally find everything you need is there so what I've got here is the settings from that video so you'll find the link to the video and this PowerPoint also in the same overlay folder with uh, this PowerPoint and the link uh, as well okay now I'm running this is uh, unscripted by the way so if I seem to hesitate for a moment or I'm thinking about what I say next it's because I don't have a script anyway okay so what do we want to actually do and we'll see this in uh, when we get to the uh, the chart itself so ideally I want to overlay a two period RSI now you still may use the five period short-term stochastic that we'd normally use on a chart however the two period RSI to me is cleaner because it'll give me straight lines rather than the short-term stochastic from the anchor chart one on the overlay chart it can be a bit wavy and a little more jagged uh, in no man's land particularly so I do prefer the two RSI and it turns at exactly the same uh, uh, spot as the five period short-term stochastic I also want to overlay the long-term stochastic from my anchor chart one so we're using the exact same settings by the way we would have on an anchor chart one except they're in a lower window and I like the 30 period hull which is um, the 30 HMA now it's like a triple smooth moving average but instead of a hull or even the long-term stochastic uh, you might even use the anchor chart 121 EMA uh, if you have uh, an EMA that changes color with the trend on NinjaTrader it's called one of the versions I have is the slope indicator well it can just help you identify also the trend direction of the 21 EMA so you've got a couple of options that you've got here but these are the three that I'd uh, normally use now one of the biggest questions or one of the biggest one of the most often asked questions is when will the two period RSI or the short-term stochastic hook out of the overbought or oversold zones 
triggering a potential trade because we're trading the higher time frame for an example down here this is what's happening on the anchor chart now note here that this white line in this case is the two period RSI it's down it does not hook until now which is in this case on the high of the fourth candle sometimes depending on the time frame you're trading it might be the fifth or even the sixth candle so with these hooks that you have uh, they will vary depending on the time frame but I'll show you in a moment how you know exactly when they're going to hook well actually it's right here <laughs> um, in most cases uh, the anchor chart uh, when the anchor chart one candle closes you'll have the two period RSI or the short-term stochastic hook at that same time so ideally if uh, and some of your best trades are going to be when you're overbought or oversold in, uh, with your RSI or your short-term stochastic and when they hook out of those overbought oversold zones you're generally going to find you've got a rule of one on your anchor chart one and by using the bar status indicator on the anchor chart one or looking at that on a separate chart or even having it off to the side that will tell you where to put in a buy or sell stop order and I'll show you that when we get to the charts now very basically to confirm an entry chart setup does the anchor chart one short-term stochastic confirm the trade direction in other words has the short-term stochastic hooked or is already trending in the direction of the anchor chart one you may find that the uh, the short-term stochastic or the RSI are already well and truly overbought and you can scalp in the direction of that overbought oversold uh, short-term stochastic or even RSI in fact I'm just going to drop that in right there because something I'd missed I really should have put that in now does the anchor chart one and all of this of course is better displayed on the charts in a moment does the anchor chart one long-term stochastic confirm the trade direction so ideally we want to see the anchor chart one long-term stochastic confirm that the trade direction in fact you'll see that um, uh, in a couple of minutes I took a 89 EMA break, uh, break that's what I call them when I trade above the 89 or from the break of the 89 up to the 200 or it can be reversed of course I mean say if I'm uh, I have a reversal and I might sell when I price gets under or thereabouts the 89 EMA down to the 200 EMA now in the case of the trade I took today both the long-term stochastic uh, the, the hull and the RSI of course all three were trending in the direction of the trade and I jumped in and took the trade I hadn't and it was actually quite some time since I'd actually had a retracement so it was actually a higher risk trade but I had all of these three uh, trending in my trade direction better if I show you when we get to the charts so bottom line is to confirm the EC trade setup does the anchor chart one RSI short-term stochastic confirm the trade direction for long-term stochastic and the hull now if you don't use the uh, the overlay chart you're looking for basically exactly the same thing on your anchor chart one so let's have a look at three examples now in this particular case we'd broken out of a range here we'd rallied up and just there we had a potential trade we had a trade potential trade just here now in this case see how we were oversold we then hooked now we probably wouldn't have hooked until up here somewhere likewise just here uh, we the short term sorry the two period RSI came down hooked back up probably somewhere around here but what I wanted to point out was this price then rallied up and we then went into a trading range so in this case this is the 6e the euro dollar 
and so the anchor chart one down here is uh, a four tick so a standard setting of two and anchor chart setting of four what this shows me here is that whilst we're in choppy and we had a few other potential trades set up we would have been stopped on both of those note the two period RSI was actually down it did not hook back up in the overall direction of the trend until here so by waiting for the two period RSI to hook back up it kept us out of two losing trades now I'll have you notice here see the triangle there the little triangle there there's one there there's one there there's one here this is uh, and did I point that one we got one out we got one over here this is actually set up by the five period short-term stochastic I've simply hidden the short-term stochastic plotting in between the uh, 80 20 zone and so you can't see that there and what you'll notice is see how we turn with the two period RSI at the same spot so they're identical two total different indicators doing the same thing so what we're effectively looking for is for the short-term stochastic to hook ideally ideally if we've got the long-term stochastic and and this is not ideal but we can see right here we are in an area of chop and when I say chop you've got the 200 uh, EMA sideways you've got the 89 it is a higher risk area now note there we're actually bouncing off the prior days close so we may have even taken that trade and it would have been good for a few ticks but the key point here is traders it would have kept you out of a couple of losing trades by waiting for the two period RSI to hook back up again now in this particular case here uh, we had a hook just here uh, we had one over here now this is your standard uh, 3b just here anyway so price pulled back we can see there the two period RSI pulled back up here we rallied up but pulled back there but hooked now it wouldn't have hooked till gee was probably about the fourth or the fifth candle anyway then you had a bounce here now this was either a 34b or a 2b now remember that would not have hooked until about here now if you had have entered that trade as a 34b just there using a rule of one you would have been stopped on that trade but I'll have you note down here you did not have at or you wouldn't have had the two period RSI hooking at that stage it would not have hooked until over here so once again by waiting for the two period RSI on your anchor chart one to be trending in the direction of your trade it kept you out of another losing trade now up here we had a potential short now over here what we can see is the, uh, the short-term stochastic oh sorry two period RSI let me get this right did not hook until around here would have kept you out of that one now what that actually means is you wouldn't have been in that anyway because remember when we take a reversal trade we are waiting for the anchor chart one candle to close so if we were for whatever reason considering taking this as a divergence trade you would have found that the anchor chart one candle didn't close until about here okay so about your standard fourth or fifth candle and by the way you then had a t10 and then finally we roll back over you then have a bit of a reversal just there so look for the anchor chart one long-term stochastic 30 HMA and to our side to be fully overbought oversold uh, the reason I put that there that can be a really good indication of a potential reversal so when you're in the 80 20 zone and you've got your long-term stochastic for 30 period hull and the 2 RSI and you get a hook you may very well be heading towards a reversal see over here it was trending up but it wasn't overbought or they weren't overbought it wasn't until over here just one more so what we've got here is I've just uh, labeled or marked up 
where exactly the hook would have appeared on your uh, anchor chart one so it wasn't until here that you would have had your anchor chart one candle actually close so not there but here and so just there so I've gone back and just marked up every one of these exactly where the anchor chart one candle would have closed getting you in to these potential trades okay so we're waiting for the anchor chart one candle to close with the AC1 short-term stochastic you would have entered most of these on the close in this case on this time frame on the close of the sixth candle very easy for you to calculate traders as we're about to see so let's go to the charts now so what I would do is either have on display uh, to the right there your anchor chart one where you could see the bar status indicator uh, which you can't see just here right now now of course if you've got multiple screens it'd be great to have this fully expanded and just to be able to look at another screen where you can actually see the bar status indicator why because if we're looking at shorting just here we can see that the 30 period hull is oversold that red and blue line is the uh, long-term stochastic is also oversold and on or about the close of the fourth candle we finally had the short-term stochastic hook so what you would see until then it would just be overbought and then finally it hooks now I want to know exactly when it is going to hook okay because I want to know when to get into the trade and so what would tell me that is the uh, the bar status indicator so let's just um, scroll along here and so we look at this right here now see how that we've got uh, this would have been a 3b now as you know if we have a deeper pullback I highly recommend that you consider waiting for the anchor chart one candle to close so that means yes we could have entered here on the super scalper however because I can see all these green candles I know that I'd have green candles on the anchor chart one so what I want to do is wait for the anchor chart one candle to close which is going to be anywhere about and there it is probably about there on the close of the fourth or fifth candle okay so that gives me a potential entry note here we're still fairly oversold we're starting to pop up a little so let's just uh, scroll along look for some other examples okay we come down thank you very much okay now what do I have here uh, nothing at all at this stage so let's wait for a deeper pullback now we're pulling back now this is what we call a 200 EMA overshoot so in fact uh, let me just do this on the anchor chart one that is I just want to see is this a 200 B and it is two now look at that there and this is why this uh, yes we could put a 600 EMA on our chart so if we were to put a 600 EMA on our entry chart that would be very close to this so in other words we can see there the 200 EMA is in an up is sorry is in a downtrend just here well we'd see that um, with a well we'd see that fairly closely if I was to put a 600 actually let me do this if you're a brand new member watching this um, a picture's worth a thousand words so if I go to my EMAs I've got it all automatically set up there so see that just there can you see there traders how I'm just going to stop this all these other charts are moving all over the place there we go so uh, where was that was it just there yes so we can see it just there we've retraced we've hit the uh, 200 and you can see was that the point was it back here further I think that was it sorry everyone I've lost my spot there anyway wherever it was okay you can see there we're bouncing 
Ah, here it is. All right. I told you these videos are raw, real, and unedited. Anyway, so I'm not going to bother cutting this out. So you can see here we retraced. We've hit the anchor chart one 200 EMA. You can see it just there. Now we actually call that a T12. Now a T12 is a very high probability trade when you're trading in the direction of a trend. Now in days gone by, I would see an overshoot past the 200 on my anchor chart and on my entry chart and I wouldn't do anything with it I'd just leave it what I discovered was they can be a great setup okay and you can see there you had the hook seven or eight steps thank you very much okay now just here what have I got just here I've got another trade entry look on the right there you can see that I'm bouncing off the 89 EMA if you look over here the 30 period hull is black white is for long black is for short and my long-term stochastic is turn red now I've got that for ninja trader only and that's one of the zombie indicators okay so you're looking for the zombie indicator now what you're really looking at here is the general flow like see where we had that bounce yet they were against us so what really took um, precedent over that is really the bounce off the 200 that was more important than what the 30 period hole was doing so once again traders it will guide you with your trades but there are some things that will override what's happening on the overlay chart okay now just here I've got a nice little potential short now note here as on the slide I gave you or we, we referenced bouncing off for 200 bouncing off the 89 bouncing off for 200 bouncing off for 200 now one thing we haven't done for a while okay this is important we need to know where our major support resistance levels are just going to pause this and just have some water just one moment that's better okay so we know we do have a pivot down below and the reason that's important is a very good chance that we will trend down uh, and hit that pivot so let me just close this for now okay so we've got another short thank you very much okay so what have we now made here a new lower low guess what I'm expecting up here and yes you would have easily got your eight steps now uh, with this each one of these steps this is the 5 2 whether it be the 4 2 it does not matter which time frame you're trading okay but in this case I've got the 5 2 we could have the 6 3 it does not matter but in this case uh, each step is worth ten dollars so there's eighty ninety dollars in that move now lower low certainly looks like we're rolling over so what do we expect here and there it is there another short now just there we could wait for the hook or the anchor chart one candle to close or if I've got a very very strong trend and not saying that was in it uh, and I wasn't in a trade just there but if it's a very strong trend I'll jump in on using either the rule of one or the super scalper I will get in earlier where's that pivot okay so the pivot here would make an ideal target so let's just do this and bang okay so we now oversold with our um, uh, the long-term stochastic and the 30 period hull we're about to pull back and just here that is a 21b now just note here we do not have a hook as yet so if we had the anchor chart one candle close green and we're waiting for a red we do not have that as yet also we're almost on the pivot just here so we're very very close to the pivot now I've got a hook just here so now I've got an entry so let's just take that and I can't remember what happened there okay so a big sell-off here and we must be getting fairly close to the trades I took I think it's a little bit beyond here oh just here uh, what have we got just there traders that is what we call a 34 
B same thing no because we had that number of reversal candles uh, you would you can see there that we had the short-term stochastic actually hooked so let's just see what happens here oh, and sorry it did hook there I just can't remember where we got in okay now here I'd be looking at there do I have a divergence trade by the way with that sort of move down and look at this distance here so uh, we've got a lower low on price almost guaranteed on the anchor charts we would have had a, uh, a 2d so what that means is usually as most of you are aware if we have a, um, a 2d we target the 89 EMA now what we'd be looking for here too we can see the long term uh, sorry the two period RSI is now overbought to take the next trade we want to see that hook uh, now it actually hooks here so we would be in a short probably somewhere about here okay so we'd be in this particular trade so uh, we take a bit of heat there uh, and look what we've got here as well uh, if you're wondering about the arrows they're, they're turning very very quickly there that's actually a two a two period crossing the eight uh, just something I'm looking at at the moment um, uh, so it's not our normal eight crossing the 34 over t20 okay so nothing spectacular really with that at this stage but anyway uh, just here I look at this here I've got a double top against the 89 EMA and look what I've got just here this is what we call a bet the farm so remember when you pull back to the 89 EMA and you have a double top I know that's down by one or two ticks same difference ah and it's even a t10 so you have a long-term stochastic is now trending down so you've got a t10 now this will just be uh, interesting just to point out that remember how I mentioned earlier uh, we target and this wasn't the example I'm going to give you but we target our swing lows and swing highs so if we were taking this bet the farm trade down here at the low would be an ideal spot to, to target and what that means is you can increase your target when you've got uh, a low like that now what you might do is front run it so you get out a couple of ticks beforehand so down we go thank you very much okay so we've shot past that that would have been a beautiful bet the farm now I'm going to do some trades so in this particular case here uh, most of you that have seen me in the live trading room and that is a t10 just there okay so most of you know that um, uh, what was the point I was gonna oh, I love trading the break of the 89 and buying up to the 200 okay now look down here at your uh, at the overlay the two period RSI is up that's good the 30 period hull is still down so it's a long-term stochastic at this stage but then couple of minutes later it's actually one and a half minutes later I then had the 30 period hull hooked up so did the long-term stochastic I'm bobbing or perking my head just up above the 89 and so I decide to roll the dice now this is a higher risk trade now unlike when you're bouncing off trending EMAs this is a higher risk trade okay so if you go back to some of the setups we've seen they were all off trending EMAs they're the you know the 85 90 percent trades the 80 plus percent trades now this is still probably a good 70 percent plus and I really like these particularly after extended waves in the market okay so what I had was the two period RSI was up the long-term stochastic on my anchor chart was up and so was the 30 period hull okay so thank you very much and you can see I got right out at the 200 EMA and it continued to rally okay so it would have been nice to have got out of there now I then jumped in uh, on this treating it as a t3 now 
uh, let me just check that because uh, one two three four five six yep just it was just a t3 a t3 is basically a reversion to the mean trade and so it was ticking away quite fast at that stage so I just went by visual look so I jumped in here as a t3 so t3 once again it's from the low of the highest candle we have to be a minimum of seven steps okay so if I was to put a horizontal line and a vertical line we've got to be seven of those down and uh, we were just that so I took that trade where's my stop go just above there and I then took this as a t10 as well so I added to my position now what you can't see here and you can see here by the way that uh, we're now over sold we got the hook there on the two period RSI and I actually entered this before that actually hooked now what was encouraging me to take this was at that time and if I expand this I had a, a, a deep pullback here but I was really expecting another push back down to the short side now a little bit was um, experience and in fact I've got a couple of trades here and I'll explain perhaps where you might have had better entries now this t3 was perfect okay the t10 adding to the position because of the major EMAs was a bit iffy so here I was in the t3 but see how I've got the 89 and 200 EMA just down below so this is where they weren't perfect trades and in fact I decided to stay in them uh, because I was pretty confident we were going to break the 89 and come back down and retest for low now let me just show you this here on the recording now this doesn't have uh, and it's sorry if it's bobbing around because I jumped in here sort of uh, and that's and let me just pause that and just show you this so I took uh, this t10 just here so why was that a t10 long-term stochastic was trending down on the entry chart you can see there I had a short-term stochastic hook that made that a t10 my stop was one tick above that swing high look at that there. <laughs> okay um, so we come back and we tested that right to the tick now by the time I got down here this had already hit seven steps and I would have been out so if you're unaware I usually target seven steps seventy dollars per contract uh, I was fairly confident we were going to roll over because this is what I was seeing on the anchor chart so I decided to stay with it but quite frankly and I've done this a few times lately I got down here and started to bounce and I wish the hell I'd have got out of it quite frankly okay because we could have taken uh, that as a uh, really nice two three B and we would have picked up some good ticks out of that as well then form basically a double top but I was determined to go for uh, a larger target but as time went on I was not really happy with my decision but I will have you notice that the 30 period hull had rolled over the long-term stochastic had rolled over I had another hook just here so they were all telling me to stay short now this is where then we fluffed around here and I'll move this along because um, and we just fluffed along for ages okay so we're just bouncing around whoops and I was just checking for news because it was so slow I was really suspicious sorry I didn't mean to actually do it on this screen I was thinking why is the market so slow and we rallied back up again this is the NQ okay so the NQ is usually really moving well okay so we then rallied back up there I then come back down uh, and I typed in that note the support at the 89 and 200 we then uh, pop back down here and you may have noticed I didn't notice I'd increase my target because I was looking at the anchor chart I was making lower highs and lower lows so it appeared and, and I dropped a channel on the anchor chart one and I thought well I'll go for it now quite frankly 
uh, I should have really exited got out of these trades locked in the profit I could have re-entered on other trades which you'll see very very soon or other potential trades so that was a good setup and this was a good setup quite frankly even though you would have been out of there at break even they were legitimate setups okay oh not saying these weren't legitimate but but really that was high risk what I was doing here okay so I then increased my targets uh, coming over here uh, then we had a another potential trade here and I was already short 10 and that's really about my limitation uh, because I was thinking oh do I go short and I was thinking no we're very very flat right here okay so we're really quite flat and I'll just move this along and I had here um, to retarget the low and that's what I'm thinking the whole time let's go for the low and so we'd be making we'd made a whoops and uh, that was on another chart so we made a lower low okay it's looking good looking good I'll just skip this line and look what happened then um, so you can see there that and let me go back and freeze that for you that if I had have tied, added to my position again I would have been stopped remembering uh, I, my stops were up here and what I actually did they were up above here you may remember I then just dropped them down slightly to this high just lowering my risk slightly this then come down would have stopped me out uh, on if I'd have re-entered here that is okay so I'm still in this trade I'm still well and truly in the green as you can see uh, but and, and this is what I was looking at here was this channel traders so I was making lower highs I was in a downtrend and I'm looking at coming right back down to this low uh, at least having and I don't know if you it's probably somewhere before him actually dropped in a fib level to have a look we weren't even at the 50% level okay so uh, just kept going kept going uh, kept going okay kept going okay now we're nearly hitting our target and I'm thinking gee I can't wait to get out of this thing uh, what's this here watching what am I typing in here oh, watching oil paint dry <laughs> all right this is just torturous and um, see look at that there then it bounced back up again all right so I'd left my stop right there and it was because of the flat major EMAs because you can tend to rotate backwards and forwards so this was a trading range okay I was in then a couple of seconds later we come down uh, and then uh, I was filled thank you very much and so that was a nice uh, at last <laughs> okay so it was a nice trade um, now what actually happened straight after that is I'll show you this is I then had another trade now it already hit my target traders I'd already hit my target um, and I was up seventeen hundred dollars I thought that's it for the day I'm happy and then I had this set up and what actually happened here I think this is where I closed it down accidentally I went to move it or something like that and I froze it but as you'll see uh, in a moment where are we here just one moment I'll pull that back so we'll, we'll see that uh, set up in a moment so anyway uh, we'll just scroll along I'm gonna finish this don't let it go for too long uh, so here and this is where we could have taken this uh, 89b and that would have been a 3b uh, one two three four five six we would have probably got a minimum of five to seven steps out of that I nearly got stopped out from that t1 my stop of course was well I shouldn't say of course for traders I like to have my stop one tick below one tick above usually so let me just scroll along here okay so this is sort of really torturous here and I turned the um, uh, the super sculper on here okay and then we come down now this is what then happened so it was out and I think I've got here and I was out there so I was up 1700 so uh, here I was after 300 a day per contract so that's 1500 so I was well and truly above that however what I then set in right here was what a new lower low 
I want you to notice the 30 period hull is down the long-term stochastic is down so it's looking good and then I took this as a 3b okay I thought beauty it's only now in 25 minutes 24 minutes from there there was actually going to be the Australian interest rate announcement so I really didn't want to be in the market at that time but it was pretty much moving fairly quickly okay then came down um, and so as I said here hit my daily target but then a 3b uh, and it was just see how all of our EMAs have broken below below the 200 this is what we call a fanning of the EMA so even if I didn't jump in that one had another one really potential a uh, really nice potential uh, entry there now what I wanted to point out was we then came down to this low we then pulled back then you had another 3b just here and this is 18 minutes past and you can see the divergence you had there now I didn't take this by the way I didn't have the super scalper on part of this time now I had then another 3b remember I spoke about targeting swing lows so remembering that our pivots way down here still okay so I pivots way down there but on the way down you can target these lows and you will quite often come down and get a bounce like there you missed it by four ticks and look at that there you then hit that swing so on the way down at another 3b I wasn't just to, just just well obviously you can't see my trade entries wasn't in that one you then had a beautiful 3b then you bounced up and then there was another 3b and what you'll see going by the time there it was no effect at all uh, on the Aussie dollar now the point here is straight is this was much higher risk trading and I was very very lucky I did not get stopped but one thing I'll have you notice I didn't move my stop okay that is uh, so many traders I deal with they keep moving their stops hoping that it wasn't going to stop them out or hoping that the market will reverse so just left it there and so that could have stopped me out but I was one tick above that swing which saved me on that one but the reason I stayed with this I sort of making lower highs and lower lows sort of ticking away so that's what had me stick with that and it was quite obvious there on the anchor chart um, uh, one now what I'll have you notice though and getting back to the overlay chart your long-term stochastic was trending down it was oversold the 30 period hole was down so what was also supporting these potential trades and even these couple of trades on the way up was for long-term stochastic for short-term stochastic and the um, two period RSI and then we had that hook just there now there they didn't roll over for some time but once again on your anchor charts that showed up as a great quality 3b now when we've got a major swing like that that's where we want to consider going for a larger target so traders um, trading the overlay chart is really it's just more visual on the one chart but what you're really looking at is over here on the anchor chart one there's a 30 period hull if you look where that turns there it turns at exactly the same time on the overlay chart we've got there if I put that just here the short-term stochastic hooks exactly the same time as the two period uh, RSI hooks so it's just having all of this on the one chart but one thing that I'm missing and you can't see just here is uh, and you can't have on there well, maybe you could but I haven't tried to put it on is that is the bar status indicator and the reason that's still important for me if I do want to wait for this to hook I like to put in a sell stop order rather than using a market order okay so here I can tell by the bar status indicator when that candles going to hook now if you don't have ninja trader 8 you can soon uh, you'll discover that when you do a count 
you'll find there like in this particular let me go to that one just here how many was that down that was uh, there one two three four five at the low of the sixth candle you'd simply just go if you saw that setting up you count down six take the low of that and you can put a sell stop order at the low of the sixth candle and you'll find that's basically consistent then on every rule of one like on this one just here let me just do this here look I won't bother doing it I think you get the general idea anyway traders this is uh, trading the overlay chart so uh, stick with the trend uh, as you gain experience you may choose to do the CT trades but what I love about the I, I just like being able to see it on the one chart okay traders uh, and by the way before you email and ask me uh, I don't always use the overlay charts okay sometimes I like to look at it and use it so it just really comes down to personal preferences okay traders hope you got some ideas out of this I'll see you in the next video